Welcome to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we're broadcasting live on September 12th from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. We have several topics today. September is Suicide Prevention Month. We'll hear about the warning signs and community resources that are available. We'll also talk to the Union for State University professors about how new laws are negatively impacting higher education in Florida. That's all coming up later on in the show. First up, we're going to hear the details about why the nonprofit Florida Institute for Community Studies is losing its lease. Since 2016, FICS has leased a Hillsborough County park in town and country that had been closed since 2008. And our guest joining us right now live by Zoom is Elaine Unterberger, Executive Director of the Florida Institute for Community Studies. Welcome to Tuesday Cafe, Elaine. Thank you for having us. I'm really glad you could come on the show today. So let's start out by letting our listeners and viewers know uh, what is the Florida Institute for Community Studies? Thank you for letting me um, explain. So FIX was started in 2002 by a group of activists, mainly a lot of people from Tampa Bay, students um, and community members who really understood that there needed to be um, some kind of research or some kind of organization that could help government understand community better and actually have community have voice. So we do, we start out as a research institute and then because the services that we were coming up with as a coalition or as a planning committee um, were not taken up by other groups, we became a service provider, which is why um, out of school time became such a high priority for our communities in town and country, especially and my mama. So in my mama, we're only really working in the summer because the building out there has gotten insane, as you know. South County has boomed. Um, so finding land or finding a place for us to be has been difficult. So we're working with the schools. Um, but in town and country, we were um, at a strip mall from 20, ooh, 20, 2004 through 2016, um, paying $4,000 in rent <laughs> with a leaky roof. Uh, and we were offered this park, which had been closed, and we'd been advocating it to be opened. And the, the children really do need outside space. And in strip malls, as you know, there is no space outside. So we thought it was a great win-win, and we reopened it, leasing it for $1,845 per year, which is $1 per square foot. Um, but that's not indoor. Indoor is only about... 1200 square feet and then that's a breezeway that's covered but you know it's exposed to the elements um either way we never had a problem i have renegotiated this lease every time we re renegotiate it with the board of county commissioners we have to write a business plan submit tons of paperwork and it's always gone through last year they started saying no that they would only give us one year so for the past year I have been trying unsuccessfully to figure out why we can't stay and what the plans are for the building and what maybe we could improve if there's a problem. Um, and I've gotten nothing from them. Um, last Wednesday, Thursday was supposed to be our last day, the 7th. Um, we had divine intervention from an assistant county or district administrator who had a Zoom with me and told me that she would negotiate another month until we could find a place to go or figure this out. She requested that I do a lot more reports. That's fine. I mean, I have other things to do, but we'll do the reporting that she asked. Um, however, yesterday, and I haven't released this to the press yet, I received an, a 30-day vacate notice from parks and real estate saying we had to be out by October 11th and that there could be nothing of uh, fix left in the building. And it was, sounded very final. Um, they want me to sign it and return it. I have not signed it yet. Um, I'm still trying to understand what the letter means uh, and get back to the intermediary, but um, it's very strange. I mean, we've been out there providing food, um, we do, this is Suicide Prevention Month, we do youth mental health first aid. We're the only provider who does youth mental health first aid in Spanish um, for the Latino community and providers who provide in Spanish because the language we use with youth is really important, you know. Um, we got that grant 
in December of 2022. And so not only are they taking our space where we do the training for a mental health first aid, which can prevent suicides. And as you know, we've been having teen suicides this year, um, but they're taking our out of school time as well. Uh, so the parents organized, and as you know, they went to the Spanish speaking press. Uh, we serve right now, 100% of our students are recent immigrants. And so, you know, we provide a, a service that they can't get anywhere else. And my Portuguese is bad, but we have a lot of Brazilians and, you know, I speak Portugal with them and those students are really thriving with us. <clears throat> but, you know, the, one of the options they gave us on the letter is to go to the Morganwood School. Um, but the Morganwood School already has Boys and Girls Club and we don't do the same kinds of things as they do, um, but I don't know where there's space. And then the letter says it's temporary. So, I mean, I don't know, Sean. I don't have any more answers. I responded to this letter saying, I would still like to know what the problem is and if we can fix it and if we can stay at Morgan Woods. Well, that's the voice so of that's as much as I know. <laughs> Let me remind people that, that that you're Elaine Unterberger, Executive Director of the Florida Institute for Community Studies, FIX, and they are losing their lease in a Hillsborough County park. It's Morgan Woods Park, and they're trying to negotiate with Hillsborough County about potentially staying there, but they did, as you heard Elaine say, just got a, a letter that they have to be out by October 11th. Yeah. So, and I want to also remind people that later on in the show, we're going to hear more about Suicide Prevention Month. We'll also talk to the Union for State University professors about how new laws are negatively impacting higher education in Florida. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. We're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. So, Elaine, you, you mentioned a few of the services that FIX offers, but uh, now might be a good time for you to, to tell people about some of the other things that students and, and uh, various people in the community, what kind of services they can get from FIX. Well, we, um, we've we been blessed for many years with having a uh, donation program, and I advocate for healthy food. I do not advocate for eating fast food. However, um, we have parents who've been very creative. We have Wawa and Starbucks donations, and we get, last week, we had over 400, 500 Starbucks donations. They're individually wrapped. So, you know, even if culturally, you know, a person from Venezuela is not used to eating a ham and cheese sandwich, right, they can still take the 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 components out and eat the eat the meat and that's protein for the families same with the wawa we get wawa sizzlies we get burritos we get all these things i also take them down to Y mama and distribute them there if we get a lot so you know we 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 do give them that but one of the biggest things that people come to us for is information and referral so we've been community advocates for many many years we train students we're, we have a great volunteer program for high school students, for Bright Futures, and they can, they're can they tutors and mentors, and also they help us with as community advisors. I'm looking at what's working, what's not working in our area, and a lot of the programs we have come directly from them. Like, we adopted Hanley Road because the students were concerned about pollution, Um and so we do a cleanup with Keep Tampa Bay Beautiful. So these are the kinds of things we do, but uh, back to the food, I think the food is really important. On the weekends, we we load people up, you know, like take as much as you want for the weekend because, you know, there's no there's no school lunch on the weekend. Our families work two and three jobs. So the fact that they organized themselves and went to media and took time off work, you know, that just shows me how I'm 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 amazed by them. They really worked hard to get media attention and we thought maybe we had gotten someplace with the county so that we could negotiate and it's not happened so they're very upset um i'm reeling trying to figure this out um if if you have someone that's watching if you have a van that's you know approved to transport children the thing is that this park is located on a school grounds it's directly next to the school so this is the biggest obstacle, right? For us to leave is to do the the after school program because we don't have a van. So if we move somewhere else, how will the children get to us? Oh, and a mind. lot of our parents walk. They come, they walk after they're, you know, at six o'clock, they pick up the children at six walking. 
So Elaine, in a statement, the county said that it had notified you last September that your lease would expire this month and that it wanted to maximize use of its park facilities and that nonprofits were providing programming and series primarily aimed at local youth. So um, I, it sounds like they were zinging you for also yes. um, uh, impacting the, the adults in the community and that that your, your uh, facilities were not a great use of its park facilities. Right. Well, I would like to see what that means. I don't. That's why I asked them. I'm like, what does this mean? Like, I have no idea that there was a problem. You don't. I mean, how do you help youth if you don't help their parents? I mean, our model is that the community is at the center. So we have a model of risk that we put together um, under one of our SAMHSA grants, which really looks at things from the individual family community, school work, you know, and society levels. And you can see how intertwined all these things are. If you don't help families, if you don't help adults, like we do a lot of translation, um, <clears throat> which for free for parents so they can understand their bills. You know how confusing these electric bills are, right? So, you know, we do a lot of that kind of thing. If you don't support the whole family, I don't, I mean, I'm not saying that that's not a good thing to just help children. However, our, our approach is very different. We're, we're really trying to build capacity in communities, which is why training community members with youth mental health first aid and evidence-based programming is so important. And I don't understand how that could be against our lease. When I wrote the business plan, we've always mentioned our model of risk. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we've always mentioned that we are, you know, wraparound services. So it's never been like that we're not trying to just house a lot of children um and you know say look at us rah rah we're we're trying to help the community overall thrive and we have great success stories as a result yeah. because we really try to to have that communication we have parent meetings we have events we have a lot of cultural events that help people feel good about being multicultural Sorry. Well, as we wrap up this segment, Elaine, I want to ask if you've been trying to meet or dialogue with the county to potentially renegotiate something. I have. I have, but it's like crickets. And then they send me this letter. Um, I'm going to do the reporting that was more reporting than was requested. Um, down to how many kids, how many adults we had every day. Um, because we have sign-in sheets, of course. Um, but, you know, I don't think this is the issue. Um, Sean, as a parting note, I mean, there is development happening in town and country across the street. They're putting in anywhere between 55 houses or something and a private park. Um, and I think that parks probably need some oversight because I don't, I think they have, they're doing things maybe that we don't know. Well, there's, other plans, there's other plans for that area, I think. I want to thank you so much for coming on Tuesday Cafe, yeah. Elaine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. I and appreciate again, you can go ahead. You can, out, you can reach out to me anytime. I'll always give you the update. I, as much as I know, I'll share with you. I don't understand it. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming in. Elaine Unterberger is executive director of the Florida Institute for Community Studies. They thank lost you. their lease in the town and country area. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, broadcasting from WMNF live on September 12, 2023.